kind of, I don't want to say advanced, because it's actually not complicated in, in how things get set up, but it is sort of next level stuff. Uh, so uh, not telling you to get up and leave the room, because that would look embarrassing for me. But if you probably, if you have one book out, if you haven't published your first book, um, a lot of this will be really useful information later. Uh, for now, you should work on finishing that first book and then getting more of your backlist. Selling direct is going to be the kind of thing that you want to do once you have more of a backlist. And what do we talk about? What do we mean when we're talking about selling direct? Right? I hit a key that made it mad. Okay. Um, most people come up and they ask me questions about BookFunnel and, and what, they, what they mean when they talk about selling direct is setting up a huge bookstore and putting up their entire backlist and doing the whole thing. And, and it is that. Um, but it's not only that, because that actual part of it, that takes some work, and right? And so what people often do is they come up and they say, oh, I'd love to get into direct selling. I just don't have the time to set all that up. And my answer is, yes, you do, because you don't have to go and build a whole store just to sell direct. Yeah, and in fact, I would advise against it unless you know for a fact that you have a super awesome base of super fans who are just champing at the bit to buy direct from you, right? Um, it's better to start small and start a little bit and test the waters and see what you're going to do. So uh, the, the best one that I've known that authors have done is try, uh, let's just start right out of the gate with some things that you can try. Try doing a special deal for your newsletter or your super fans. Um, offer book, if you, you know, let's say you sell your, you know, you've got a series, you sell all the books for $4.99, offer them the first two books in the series for 99 cents buying direct from my store, right? And what that's going to do is, number one, it's going to test and see um, by offering a really great discount. First of all, you're, you're pleasing your readers. Everybody loves discounts. But you're also seeing how many of your newsletter are going to buy from you, how many people are paying attention. And I will tell you, people don't pay attention to all their emails, right? So don't just send one email and then go, oh, the response was terrible. A lot of people either never saw it, never read it, or meant to read it later, or put it in their trash. My wife has like 10,000 something something little bu bubble above her mailbox. I'm like, why do you even have email? What's the point of that? <laughs> um, so, but it, it's, you know, you, uh, by offering up a discount or even saying, hey, look, um, you know, here's my five book series. I don't bundle this anywhere else. You can't get this in a bundle on Kobo or Amazon or anywhere that I sell it. You can only get this bundle, especially from my store um, at a discount. That's a really good way to test the waters, and you don't have to build a whole store for that. You're just building one little landing page with one little sale button on it. Um, use, utilizing Kickstarter. Kickstarter is selling direct, right? You're, you're selling direct to your readers. You're pre-selling because you're not actually selling the thing that you have. You're selling them a thing that you're going to have, or you're selling a thing that you're going to, to deliver later. So it's kind of like your own little personal pre-orders, but Kickstarter, if you want to start looking at Kickstarter, and we're going to talk about that, that is selling direct. Um, and then Patreon. Uh, we have a lot of authors that are already out there using Patreon uh, to sell direct to their readers in a different format, but they're still selling direct. They are taking the money and they are delivering, we are delivering the goods that that they are selling, right? And we're actually going to go through some of the authors on BookFunnel that are using this and we're going to talk about them as use cases. So selling direct is anywhere that you, the author, are are control the transaction that you are having with your readers and you are the platform, right? You're not selling, you know, Shopify is the platform where you can set up a store, but Shopify is not a platform where people go to hang out and they're like, man, I love to just browse around Shopify to see what's going on, right? Shopify is simply the facilitator that's allowing you to do the sale in the same way that BookFunnel, we're just here to help you deliver the thing and then get out of your way. So well, why, why sell direct? Well, um, it's not about the money. What it's really about is connecting with your readers in a way that really has almost never been possible before, right? The internet, um, ebooks, audiobooks, all of these things have made talking with and communicating and being direct with your readers um, better than it's ever been in the past, right? When I was a kid, um, you, you occasionally you could read a book and, a, and an author might have a cool sign up or have a thing where you could send a letter to them and be part of their fan club. And you might get a form letter back or sometimes you might even get the author would like write back a little handwritten note or something right, like that, right? Or you sign up for like Teen Girl Magazine or Teen Beat. I had a picture of Corey Haim on my wall. Like, and nobody else had that picture because I had it and it was definitely signed by Corey Haim himself. I know it. It's, it's about the connection and making that connection with your readers. That's the real power of direct. Um, and then even more, it's about the data, you guys. Um, 
if you have a list, let's say you've built up a list of, of a thousand people and you know who those people are. And then people over here are buying your books on Amazon, but you can't connect those two pieces together. I don't know that these people are those people, or even if you're in KU, I'm getting, you know, mystical, magical page reads from somewhere at no clue where those are coming from or who's doing it. When you are selling direct, you have all of the data. I know you bought my three book box set, which means that number one, you hadn't read them before. So now I have a piece of data. You were on my list. And you hadn't read the first three books of my series. Well, now I'm hoping that you do. But I can also send you a follow-up email a few days later. Hey, I hope you're enjoying the books. Please let me know, you know, how, how you're enjoying them. Who's your favorite character so far? You know, those three books were some of my favorite to write. And I really love da 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 It was my favorite character, right? Engaging, really. And then the value is not in the sale. It's, it's in the relationship that you deepen with your readers. And um, <clears throat> the value that you create with a direct connection. Now, when we talk about data, we're not talking about creepy data, right? <clears throat> this isn't about stalking your readers and doing things like that. We're really just talking about knowing who your buyers are, not just who your readers are, but who the buyers are, who is actually buying your stuff. <clears throat> but let's be real, it's, it's also about the money and it's not not about the money, <laughs> right? We're not, we're all, we're all authors in the room, right? We like money. We want to sell books and, and, you know, it feels, feels kind of gross to say that sometimes because we want to be all high minded and literary and be like, well, I write literature and I want people to read my literature and, and be like, but also I don't like being homeless. <laughs> so it, it is about the money, right? And let's talk about that. So a $4.95 ebook, let's just say, assume you're selling your, your ebook on Amazon for $4.95. $4.95 will net you $3.47 minus delivery fees because it's not just it's not just 70%. It's 70% and then, oh, well, you got to subtract those delivery fees because Amazon's got to take their pound, sometimes multiple pounds of flesh. You sell that same $4.95 ebook direct from your store, you get $4.51 minus the cost of a book funnel account, which a lot of you probably already have. Raise your hand if you have a book funnel account. It's a pretty good portion of the room. Um, you, the, the cool thing is, is that if you have one or even if you don't and you get a book funnel account and you're using it for a bunch of other things, that's a cost you're already assuming, right? But I do want to note that I don't want anybody to point out, it's like, well, but I have to have a book funnel account. Like I, I noted that, right? But here's where it gets really interesting. Let's talk about a $14.95 audio book. So an audio book sale on Audible costs the reader $14.95 for a credit. Now, Audible actually has plans where you can buy, you know, 12 credits in advance. You can buy them a year. Well, those cost $11. Guess what? You get 40 or 25% of $11 now instead of $14.95. If you buy 24 credits, you can actually get them for just over $9. Well, guess what Audible gives you your cut on? It's the $9, not the $14.95. But most people buy the, the plan where they get one credit a month and they pick up one audiobook at $14.95. So for you, if you're exclusive to Audible, you're getting $5.98 on that $14.95 audiobook, assuming that their math is correct and that you actually get 40% of that sale. We'll talk about, we can talk about Audible's black math some other time, but uh, let's assume that their numbers are, are legit. Um, you're going to get $3.74 if you're non-exclusive. That's the 25% rate. Now let's take that same audiobook and you're selling it direct from your website for $9.99. So 10 bucks. Already a $5 discount over what you would sell it for on Audible, but you take home $9.40 of that $10 sale. If you sold it for $14.95, if you sold it for the exact price that they would pay on Audible, you take home $14.22, right? So it's not, not about the money. So let's talk about how we get started with direct sales. Um, you don't have to run out and build the whole store. I know I talked about this at the beginning, but I want to reiterate um, you don't have to just jump in with both feet and be like, woo, I'm going to build a whole store. You can. And I know that there are some eager beavers out there who are already probably you know, signing up for Shopify and building your store while I'm talking. Um, <laughs> but you don't have to get started that way. You can actually start with some small, quick sales, um, either bundles or discounts or pre-selling. Um, we'll talk about that in a little bit. And, and um, really just kind of test the waters and A, see if this is something that you want to do. B, see if this is something you have the bandwidth for, right? We, in computer tech, we talk about bandwidth. And that's basically like, I got this much time and I got this many things to do. 
So you're going to have to prioritize the things that you want to do. But if, if selling direct and direct connections with your readers and more money is important to you, then for sure it's something that you want to try and make time for. But it's a lot easier to make time to do a sweet little bundle discount than it is to try and set up an entire store. Um, your fans, I, um, I, I tell the story before, I've told it several times, but back when we launched sales in 2017, uh, we launched BookFunnel in 2015, and the very first feature request we got was, can you deliver my direct sales? Uh, the second one we got was audiobooks, and our answer was, whoa, 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 we just launched a week ago. So I held off on building direct sales delivery for a long, long time, for two years, because my feeling was, it's not going to work, you guys. People don't want to buy from you. They want to buy from Amazon. They want to buy from Kobo. They want to buy where they're comfortable. But authors kept bugging me about it. They kept emailing me, like, when are you going to do direct sales? When are you going to do direct sales? And so finally I was like, here, here's your direct sales. Now go get zero sales and shut up. And they were like, oh, crap, people are selling stuff, right? And what we found was, because we talked to readers uh, all day, every day. Our support people, we answer between three and 500 emails a day directly with readers. Some of them are helping readers get their books. Other times they just email us to say hi, right? <laughs> um, we've had readers that have been with us that have been with BookFunnel, ha have used BookFunnel because of authors like you for seven years, and they will send us Christmas cards. Uh, they will send us, they will send us Starbucks gift cards. Um, they, they love us. They'll email us and ask us which laptop they should buy. And the reason is, <laughs> I'm not kidding. And the reason is our support always answers. Every single email gets answered by a human being. There are no robots. There are no automations. Every single email is answered by a human being, one of our people, and they know it. They know if they get on the support with Amazon, you're probably not going to get a human. And if you do, you're probably not going to get a very good answer from that human. But they email book funnel support and they're always going to get a good answer. They're always going to get a person. But what we found was your fans love you right? There are plenty of readers who are loyal to Amazon, right? I only read free books. We hear that all the time. I only read free books, meaning they are in KU and they just, whoop, whoop. they just read the next book. They don't even know the author's name. They don't care. They're just looking for the next cozy mystery that's going to be fun for them to read. But that's actually a pretty small portion of the reading audience. Most of them, they love their authors. They love their authors way more than they love Amazon. And sometimes direct selling is as simple as saying, hey, my new book's available. You can buy it from all the stores. But if you buy it from me, I get a little bit more, you know, I get a little a bigger cut of the sale. And that's enough. We've seen that over and over again. That's enough to push people to buy direct from you. Readers email us. Oh, I just love her books. I buy, I always buy direct because I love BookFunnel, but also because I know that I can get them through BookFunnel, but also I want to make sure she gets the money, right? We actually have an author whose whole message when you join her newsletter talking about her direct sales is because she doesn't want to give more money to Jeff Bezos, right? She's actually capitalizing on the people out there that really don't like Amazon all that much and would really rather not more money go and, I mean, like he's not even at the company anymore. May still owns most of it, but like she's, she's hitting on that messaging and she's catching those people who are like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to buy direct from you. I'm going to, I'm not going to send money to him. Um, so it, it will take time because you're training your readers to buy from you. It's a different system. Uh, the nice thing is, if you're setting up your own store, if you're setting up on a place like Shopify, chances are really good they've probably bought something off of Shopify before and didn't even know it. Um, I went out and bought uh, t-shirts, a, a pack of t-shirts recently. Can't tell it's a Shopify store. I was just buying a pack of t-shirts, but I get to the end and it goes, hey, Damon, we've already got your credit card on file. Do you want to just use that? And I'm like, a little creepy, but yes. <laughs> How do you know where I buy my underwear? <laughs> but it was because it was a Shopify store. So you get, again, you get a network effect if you're using these platforms that other people use. Same thing with PayPal. Every, I don't say everybody, but a whole lot of people have PayPal accounts, right? So just setting up a single little buy button on PayPal, which will take you five minutes and shooting that out to your newsletter. Everybody's like, I'll choose PayPal because I just don't have to get up and go find my wallet. <laughs> Okay, um, but it is going to take time because you're, you're training readers to buy in a different way. But you can add value to your readers while also making more money. Going back to that audiobook, right? Audible wants $14.95. I'll give it to you. And, and God help you if you actually go look at the webpage and it's just like, well, $14.95, buy it with your credit. Or you could pay $8,000 cash, right? It's there. I, no one can explain their pricing model. I hope the ACX people aren't in the room in the back somewhere. <laughs> Woo! They are not going to be pleased. Um, 
But, it, you know, going back to that audiobook example, I'll sell it to you for 10 bucks. I'm already giving you a 33% discount over what you would buy it at Audible for. And I make three times the money. So why would I not do that? You can add value while also making even more money. Uh, and everyone wins. Your readers win. They get discounts. They get a deeper connection with their authors. And you get more money. Briefly, I want to talk about print. Just so we're clear, Book Funnel does not deliver print. We don't do physical products. We never will. But there are lots of services out there that do. The reason that I bring it up is because we, ha we do have lots of authors that are bundling print and digital products together. And that is something you can do. So, for example, if you've got your Shopify store set up and you're using Book Vault to deliver your print, they buy a print bundle. So you put together a bundle that has print and ebook and audiobook together, or print and audio, right? However you want to bundle them together. Somebody buys that bundle. Well, Book Vault gets notified about the sale, and they go, well, that ebook's not us. Oh, there's a print book. That's us. And boom, they start printing it, shipping it. Meanwhile, Book Funnel gets the same delivery and goes, paperback, that got nothing to do with us. Oh, audiobook, that's us, and we send our thing. So in, our, in that case, they would get their audiobook instantly through an email from Book Funnel, and then their, their paperback is printing. We have authors that do um, special edition signed copies when they do new releases. So as they put out new releases of their books, they offer signed limited edition copies before the book is published. But if you buy the signed paperback, you also get the ebook for free, you know, so you can start reading it right now while you're waiting to get that signed copy in the mail. Um, and those are, now you're talking about fans who, if it's a fan who's willing to pay $25 for a signed copy of your book, they want to read that book right now. And what you're offering them is, hey, it's not even going to be published everywhere else for two more weeks. So you're going to get it two weeks early. Does everybody remember like when the Harry Potter books were still being published and people would line up at midnight at Barnes and Noble to read them and then stay up all night like reading Order of the Phoenix, which was like 800,000 words, and they like fall over dead, but not before posting on Twitter, I finished the book first, <laughs> right? Those are your super fans. Those are the kind of people that are going to come and buy from you. So for print on demand, we, we have authors using all kinds of things. Um, you can use KDP, KDP print. It's not going to be automated. You're basically going to have to take each sale and like leather shoe it yourself over to KDP, order a copy and have it delivered to the reader. Um, Ingram Spark is going to be the same. Lulu and Book Vault both integrate with Shopify and WooCommerce. Uh, once you have that integration set up, it's just turnkey. Somebody makes an order, it goes out to them, they drop ship it, you're ready to go. That's all we're going to talk about print. Because again, Book Funnel does not deliver physical products or print books. So start with selling from Patreon. So Patreon is tailor-made for super fans, right? It's a, it's a system, it is a platform that is designed for people to pay you for things that you haven't even already given them yet, right? Um, those are super fans. Most people are not coming in to pay you for something that you that they don't know what they're buying. Uh, you don't go to the airport and buy the mystery bag book, right? That's not even a thing because that would be horrible. You get on the plane, and you're like, oh, well, right? Nobody does that. So Patreon is, is literally your super fans who are coming in and buying from you um, because they want whatever you're going to publish and they don't even know what it is yet. But it's not as attractive to casual readers. So if you're going to do Patreon, great. But don't only do Patreon because you're not going to be able to get casual readers. Those free people who are your super fans are not going to be able to tell their friends to come and get a copy of this new book early or pre-sell it or anything like that because they would have to follow you on Patreon. But it is still a fantastic way to work with your, your, um, your super fans. And it's a great way to pre-sell. So let's talk about um, – and, and believe it or not, you don't actually have to get a Patreon and post every single day or every single week or anything like that, right? It's, it's all about the amount of effort that you want to put in. You can just use it to, to put out new books. You can use it to do cover reveals. You can, it, it's kind of the effort that you want to put in. Now, I will say, if your super fans are willing to pay you, you probably should give them a little something for their money. Um, but you don't have to. And then here's a perfect example. This is Lindsay Baroker. She is a science fiction fantasy author. She flip-flops a lot. But um, she has a Patreon. And on her Patreon... Um, she never posts to her, po to her Patreon, except when she has a new book to publish. But her deal is if you follow me on Patreon, if you follow me at five bucks per, so Patreon, if you don't know, has two models. They have a per month model and a per creation model. So per month is what it sounds like. You're going to pay me five bucks a month. And then if I don't publish that month, well, then you're just paying me five bucks and you're not getting anything for it. 
They also have a per creation model. You get five. I'm you. You're you're agreeing to pay five dollars every time I put out a new creation, which can be different for everybody. But in case of authors, you're probably talking about stories. So if you follow her at five bucks, you get every novel that she publishes early, usually one to two weeks before they're published everywhere else. So she has built up a fan base. It's not huge. Five hundred forty-four patrons. Three thousand three hundred twenty-nine dollars. Her creation. So that means that 544 of her fans are willing to pay her $3,000 for a book they don't even know the title to. They don't know what she's going to publish. They're just saying, you know what? I'll buy it, right? I've been a reader my whole life since I was a kid. I still read authors today that I read when I was a kid. They are on my immediate buy list. I don't even care what your book is. If you got a new title out, I'm going to buy it from you. That's the kind of super fans that you want to build, right? Here's another guy. He might be in the room. I met him earlier. I met him earlier this week uh, and asked his permission after I'd already put him in the slides. This is Michael. <laughs> um, this is Michael Chatfield. And what he's doing is uh, he's actually set up his Patreon in the same way. You're getting his books early. You're getting an early ebook release, an early audiobook release. He, he publishes his audiobooks at the same time as he does his ebooks. So you get audiobooks released early, but you have to follow him at a higher level, right? You've got to fo be following me at $25 a month if you want all my audiobooks as they're released. But what he's doing is he's actually publishing each chapter of his book to his Patreon as he finishes them. So his readers are getting the raw, unfiltered experience of having his books like a Wattpad just flying at them chapter by chapter by chapter. Now, you may not want to do that, and that's totally okay, but I use this as an example of once you start getting super fans, you know, you look at me, he's got 680 patrons down there, right? Um, and they're following that 5, 10, 25, and higher levels because each level gets you a little bit something different. I know he does a lot of audiobooks because we deliver a lot of audiobooks for his, meaning that people are following him at that tier where they're getting the audiobook early before everybody else. Kickstarter. I'm, I see my time counting down, so we're going to skip ahead just a little bit. So selling with Kickstarter. Um, once again, Kickstarter is selling direct. Um, you're pre-selling because you're you're offering them a thing. At least now they know the title of the thing. <laughs> you're pre-selling them a thing, and, and you're asking them to sign up and pay for it because you're going to do hardbacks or you're going to do audiobooks or, or whatever it is that you're going you're gonna to pay for. But sometimes you're just doing it because you know that your fans want to get it early. I... Um, as an author named uh, fantasy author named Michael J. Sullivan, he uh, he was he was self pub. He sold his books to traditional, and then he went back to self publishing because uh, of contracting deals. But ultimately, now he launches every single one of his new books, his new fantasy books, on Kickstarter every single time. And he now gets because he built up a fan base. I mean, I, everybody saw Brandon Sanderson, right? No, nobody's been living in a cave, right? Okay, w w none of us I, I, is Brandon here. I mean, he, he, you know, he, he lives in Utah. He's not, not too far from here. Um, so let's not talk about Brandon because that's just, that, that's crazy money, right? That's just, woo, you know, <laughs> like you see Daffy Duck, woo, woo, woo. Um, Michael J. Sullivan launches every one of his Kickstarters over $100,000. Um, that is for the, you, for, for me, like ebook readers, you get the ebook early, right? So I get it six weeks before everybody else gets it before it's published. Um, that also includes audiobooks at a certain level, and it includes like beautiful leather bound hardcover editions at a certain level. So again, all depends on the kind of effort that you want to do. Yes, we have a question back there. There you go. Yes, and I and my name and and the other thing he sells if you back him on Kickstarter, your name goes at the credits. At the credits, at the end of the book, he backs, he mentions every single one of his Kickstarter backers by name. Go look for Damon J. Courtney. You'll find me in the back of every single one of them. <laughs> Thank you. I am a Michael J. Sullivan super fan, right? So that's what we're talking about on Kickstarter. We're selling to super fans, but you're actually going to attract some casual fans because people will find a book and go, hey, this looks really interesting, right? This, this book actually looks like something that I could like. And they want to back you for... I mean, five bucks, 10 bucks for, for a lot of people. That's, that's not a huge buy to discover a new author, but you're pre-selling the book to the people who want it the most. Almost invariably, the biggest offer that, that readers are getting with, with Kickstarter is you're going to get the thing early. 
You're going to be the early adopter. You're going to be the first one to get it before everybody else reads it. And that's really, really powerful for people that are super fans. Um, Kickstarter actually has its own fans and its own audience. People that just browse Kickstarter to see what they want to back next, right? It's actually a whole culture of people. Um, gaming, uh, board games are huge on Kickstarter. And people will literally just browse through the board game section to see what's new and go, Oh, that looks like a cool game. I'll back that for 50 bucks, right? So by putting things on Kickstarter, you're actually reaching an audience of their fans that you wouldn't otherwise have access to. So Kickstarter is going to be more work than Lindsay, who do really just kind of flops, you know, puts a post out and says, hey, I have a new book once a month. Uh, but it's going to be less work than Michael, who's posting every chapter as he writes it. This is Kevin J. Anderson. He's walking around here somewhere. Um, he's kind of short, so you may not find him. He, he blends in with crowd, but... <laughs> Um, he recently did a Kickstarter for, uh, he has a series of, of zombie PI novels for Dan Shamble zombie PI. Um, as far as I know, he hadn't published in that series in quite some time and decided he'd really like to do another Dan Shamble novel. So he put it up on Kickstarter, ended up making $46,000 over his $2,000 goal, right? Uh, that's a, that's a nice little trick for Kickstarter. If you're not sure that you're going to hit a huge goal, start with a lower goal because people actually will support you at lower goals. And you'll, you'll leapfrog over that and sometimes really get into the higher numbers. <clears throat> but um, he put this up and the kinds of rewards he offered were, again, early access to the ebook, print copies, audiobooks. Uh, Kevin records. <laughs> so Kevin records the audiobooks himself um, because he feels like he has the right voice for the, for the comedy. They're very funny books. Um, I'm actually a fan of Dan Shamble. Um, so one of the things, he, one of the tiers he actually offered was um, he dictates all of his books. Right. He, he, he goes hiking, um, which is really funny because if you listen to some of his raw audio, you can tell how far into the hike he is by how heavy he's breathing. But um, he also hilarious. He also so he's distributing these these raw audio files of him dictating the book. This is not the audio book. This is like seeing into the process of how Kevin J. Anderson writes his books. But what's really funny about that is um, he's very he's a big fan of his own jokes. And so. <laughs> You can actually, you can actually hear him in the audio and he's just like, and he turned and da, 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 da. <laughs> that's a good one. Like, <laughs> but if you're a Kevin J. Anderson super fan, how awesome is that, right? To be able to, to get a little, a, a peek into the process of how he does what he does, right? And then of course, you're getting the audiobook early. People got the audiobook for Dan Shamble months before it was ever even close to being published anywhere else. That is what you get when you back people on Kickstarter. So now we're talking about pre-selling and, and Kickstarter and Patreon are both examples of pre-selling, but now we're actually talking about a transaction between you and the reader, not the platform. Patreon is a platform that you're on. And then there's a little bit of friction there because you're having to manage the platform as well as the relationship. Same thing with Kickstarter. Kickstarter, they don't have rules, but there are certainly guidelines to follow. You want to put out regular updates that people know how it's going, how the books are shipping, what the progress is, because they've backed you knowing that they want the thing that's coming out. Now we're literally talking about you have the product, you're ready to go, and you're pre-selling it, either through pre-orders if you want to do that, um, or just because you're selling it before you put it up everywhere else. So you're keeping the maximum profit from the sale. Kickstarter and Patreon are not expensive. They do take 10% of all the money that you take in, um, but it's not... It's not a crazy amount of money, but what's that? Did somebody have something else? Okay, so Kickstarter takes 5%. <clears throat> um, you're keeping everything but the transaction fee when you're actually selling direct from your website. Um, they're, again, they're buying the book before anybody else can get it because they're, you're offering them something great. Um, and this actually works even if you decide you're, that you ultimately publish your books into KU, uh, into Kindle Unlimited. I don't feel like I have to explain that, but sometimes. Uh, into Kindle Unlimited or if you go wide. <clears throat> this is Dakota Kraut. Uh, he's probably giving a talk somewhere else right now. And that's his lovely wife, Danielle. Um, Dakota <clears throat> started three books ago, three releases ago, pre-selling his books directly from mountaindalepress.com, which is his publishing company. Um, you could, the first one, he put it out there and it's the ebook, the audiobook, or you could buy a bundle of the ebook and audiobook together. He made one post in his Facebook group and it was sort of just like, hey, this new book's going to be in a couple of weeks. And if you want to buy it early, you might over here. Thanks everybody. Right? <laughs> Nothing. Um, but he actually made really good money immediately from the fans who were waiting, who wanted that book and wanted it early. So then they decided, well, that went really well. They published his next book. Only now, this is the, the seventh book in his current primary series. So a lot of people waiting for this book. They offered that book up same way. Only this time, if you buy it early, you get it a month before everybody else. Ebook, 
or audiobook or a bundle of the two. And he doubled the money that he made on the first round. So then they decided, well, we'll do that with book eight too. They put that one out and they more than doubled the money that they made the second time over. So with each release, they're two Xing the amount of money that they're making before they've published the book anywhere. But what's great about that is with every release, he's taking a little bit more of his audience and peeling them away from buying over on Audible, which is fine. He still publishes the book on Audible. And when he goes on Audible, they're still exclusive because they make a lot of their money. Mountain Dale Press makes most of their money on, on um, Audible sales, which means they want that extra 15% for exclusivity. But before it goes exclusive, <clears throat> we want to peel a little bit more of that audience away. The more of those audience that we can peel away buying direct from us, uh, it doesn't actually, and they found that it didn't actually affect their sales or their profits on Audible at all because it wasn't that many people. They have a, I will say they have a fairly big audience, right? So we're dealing with numbers. We're dealing with a lot of people, but all the people that bought direct didn't actually affect the number of sales or the amount of money that they made once the book hit Audible because he tracks it. He's a data nerd. So he tracks his numbers meticulously. Um, so it's, it's, you're really just pre-selling to your absolute super fans. You're not going to end up affecting. I mean, if you do somehow end up affecting your rank, so what? You know, cry all the way to the bank. <laughs> you know, um, that's okay. Um, and then now finally, let's, because I'm down to 13 minutes, let's talk about the whole store, <clears throat> right? This is what we're talking about, what most people think direct selling. We're talking about building a bookstore that is the Damon J. Courtney, not me, because I only have three books, but like the Damon J. Courtney store where you can buy ebooks and audiobooks and paperbacks and hardbacks and coffee mugs and tote bags and dogs. Like, it's the whole store. <laughs> I don't sell dogs. Book Funnel does not deliver dogs. <laughs> so this is your own Amazon. This It's all about you. People come to your store and they're there to buy stuff from you. Uh, the beautiful thing is you control every pixel on the page, right? Um, does everybody remember? I know we were here. We, we've been to every 20 books, literally every one, when it was just a room about this size and we all fit in one. Um, there used to be this, this old hat, this old saw that was like, well, I mean, if you're going to run ads, you should send them direct to your Amazon page because that's the best converting page in the whole wide world. Um, it's great at converting sales for Amazon. Um, it's not great at actually converting sales for you because think about it. If you were going to put up your own book and you wanted to really convert, would you put one star reviews at the top? I don't, I don't think you would. I wouldn't. Would you cut off your description two lines in? I don't think I would. But if I were trying to sell somebody a lawnmower or an ashtray, I probably would, right? Or if I were trying to run ads to a bunch of other people's books, I, I probably would design a page that way. So when you're building your store, when you're building your landing pages, you own every pixel from the top left corner to the bottom right. You can put on there what you want. There are plugins for Shopify, WooCommerce, all these stores where you can actually add reviews for your books. Your readers can come to your store and leave reviews right there on the page. And if they leave a crappy one, you can just delete that review. <laughs> I'm not Yelp. I have no, I have no interest in reading your one star reviews. We're like, thank you for your feedback. Yoink! You design the sales experience from, from the time that they get to your page to the time that they hit the button that says, I want to buy it to the time that you then say, Oh, Hey, listen, you've already got book one in your cart. I'll, uh, I'll, uh, we're having a special this weekend only. It's not this. It's like the furniture stores that are go perpetually going out of business. They're like, Oh my God, we're going into business. That sign's been on the window for 20 years. You, Hey, you've already got book one. Hey, listen. Just this weekend only, we're selling books two and three for an additional 99 cents. It's the super size model, right? Right? I pull up to the McDonald's drive-thru and so I'm kind of a fatty. So I pull up to the McDonald's drive-thru and I'm like, all right, I'm just going to get a McDouble. Don't get the fries. Don't get the fries. Don't get the fries. Don't get the fries. Did you want fries with that? Yes, large fries. Dang it! <laughs> they get you. Oh, you stupid McDonald's. Oh, I love these fries. <laughs> you design that sales experience. You can be the one who says, hey, listen. Uh, you've got my free book, right? I, we see authors do this all the time. Now I'm not giving, I'm not giving you the first book for free. I'm selling it for zero dollars or I've given you a coupon code that lets you get book one for free. But hey, listen, since you've already got book one, um, I'm actually running a special on the whole series right now, an eight book series for $14.99. You would be amazed how quickly those bumps, what they call bump products and upsells, 
um, grab everybody. And we'll talk about that in the next slide. So, and most importantly, you get all the data. You know every single reader, every book they've purchased from you. You can actually put that data to use. I know that you've bought my whole series. So when the next book comes out, I definitely want to make sure that you know about it. And I definitely want to make sure that you know that it's pre, it's or available for pre-sale right over on my website. Cause you already bought the first eight right from my website. So, um, really briefly, we'll talk about the different store types that BookFunnel integrates with. First up, there's Gumroad, PayHip, PayPal. These are great for single landing pages, bundles, deals, quick shot things, right? You can technically build a store on PayHip and I think on Gumroad. Um, I don't, I wouldn't really recommend it. You're probably going to end up changing to another store later and that's going to add even more work. But if you just want to shoot off a, a quick discount bundle or box set or something like that, these are going to be the stores you're looking at first. Second is Thrivecart. Thrivecart is a uh, is another landing page style that you're, you're not going to be able to build out a huge entire store on Thrivecart. It's more about getting in, getting the sale and getting out. But I will tell you that Thrivecart has incredible tools for building funnels like upsells and bump products and things like that. And it's really, really effective. Uh, we'll talk about the author, one of the authors that uh, that uses Thrivecart really, really effectively. Um, WooCommerce. WooCommerce is a plugin for WordPress. If you already have a WordPress website, um, it's really easy to install. Uh, WooCommerce is, is free if your time is worth nothing. Uh, is, is, is what, it's an old, it's an old saw in the open source software community. You know, it's all free as long as your time is worth nothing. Um, WooCommerce can be a, a bit of work to set up and, and a fair bit of work to maintain. You have to keep it updated because Look, WordPress is a fantastic piece of software. It runs like 38% of all the websites in the world run off of WordPress. Um, that also means it is the largest target for hackers in the entire world. Um, and so you off, we run several of our properties off WordPress and we, we get emails every week like, Hey, you probably should update your WordPress. There's a, there's a bug going around right now that lets everybody take ownership of your website. Bye. Um, and then finally, the big guy is Shopify. And I say the big guy because Shopify is the second largest store in the world just after Amazon. Um, they, and like I said, you get a network effect. Um, you know, Gucci, Louis Vuitton, these companies run Shopify stores. Nike runs a Shopify store. When you buy from them, um, you're buying from a Shopify store. You don't know it. It doesn't say Shopify right? They let you remove all the branding so that it never even looks like a Shopify store. But then you get to the checkout and it goes, oh, hey, Damon. Welcome back. Would you like to use your Discover card? Yes, I would. And it makes the per it makes the purchase frictionless, right? So you're getting a little bit of that network effect. This is Katie Cross. Um, you probably, she made the rounds on all the podcasts earlier this year because of her store. And what she's doing is she set up her en entire bookstore on Katie Cross, KatieJCross.com, I think is her, or no, KatieCrossBooks.com. My wife lovingly put that up at the top. Thanks, Julie. Um, KatieCrossBooks.com. It's all, her whole store is run off of Shopify. Um, she sells all of her eBooks and audiobooks direct. She doesn't really pay attention to the other stores at all anymore. Uh, when she publishes a new book, she still puts them up on Amazon wide everywhere else. Um, I asked her, we had a phone call. She never even checks her dashboard. She doesn't care what her sales are. All of her sales, everything she does is on her website. And she makes a lot of money because she's built a huge fan base and she's built a whole career out of connecting with those fans and rewarding them. Free stories, free bonus chapters, all kinds of things to where people feel like she really cares as an author. Like, wow, she really cares. She's constantly putting it. She's regularly putting out new books. She sends us free stories. She sends us coupon codes, all of this kind of stuff, right? She's built a huge loyal readership to the point where she, at one point, she was running a bunch of Facebook ads and driving a bunch of traffic to her store and then had kind of let it go and wasn't really paying attention to it anymore. So she decided to just turn it off and her sales didn't drop. Because all of her buys, they were all coming from the fans that were already her fans and buying from her. So her profits went way up because now she's not spending any of the money on ads, but she's still getting all the sales. This is Emily Kimmelman. Um, Emily Kimmelman does still publish her books everywhere else. She does still really care about her, her sales on other stores, but all of her eyes, everything she's doing, all of her future development is pointed at her bookstore. This is also a Shopify store. Uh, a girl and her dog is that the dog doesn't die, but the bad guys do. Um, uh, so she sells her entire back catalog and Emily is really, really good at the upsells and the bump products. Um, I, 
I would invite you to just go through her checkout process sometime and see what she does. First of all, she'll give you the first book for free. And you just you want the first book in my series? Just pick it up. You buy it for free. But see what that does is, well, you still have to go through the shopping cart. You still have to go through the whole process. You have to download the BookFunnel app or you have to learn how to, how to put a book on using BookFunnel's help. And then once you've done all that, hey, you get an email from her that says, hey, I'll sell you the whole eight book box set for $4.99. And you go, crap, eight books for five bucks? Well, that's, that's a pretty sweet deal. But now when I go back to her store, I don't have to put in any information. I don't have to do anything to download it. I've already done all of that. I've already been through the process, right? Again, we're talking about training your readers. So at the end, um, she sells a lot. She sells a lot of books. And we actually, she started using Thrivecart for all of her stuff. And when we built the Thrivecart integration, I used her data as a, as a bellwether to sort of test everything. And I'll tell you, just looking through her transactions, uh, cause I was, you know, of course I'm reading them like, like the matrix. I'm just reading them like code just flowing across the screen. Not a single one of her transactions in the week that I was watching them, not a single one didn't have an upsell product of some kind. Meaning every single person who went through her store for an entire week bought something and then got sold into buying something else. And that is because Thrivecart and Shopify has these tools too, but I, I'm now familiar with Thrivecart because I, because I built the integration. Um, it's, it's super effective. Go play around on her website and go through her checkout process a little bit. You'll see what I'm talking about. Hey, wait a minute. Uh, before you go, I got book two for 99 cents. And you're like, oh, okay, book two is good. Hey, you already got book one and book two. I'll give you the first five for 4.99. You're like, well, it's a dollar a book. That's still a pretty good. Hey, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> And it's not annoying. It, it really is like, you know, she'll let you go at some point. But, and then, of course. <laughs> and then, of course, you actually have the data. So then you can email them a week later. Hey, I hope you're enjoying the books. It looks like you bought the first five. I, you know, they're fantastic. Um, it's actually a much longer series if you're interested. Um, we're having a sale on the next eight books in the series for $14.99, right? And now you're driving that traffic. You're driving more traffic back. And I know that you've already bought from my store. I know that you've already downloaded those books. I know you've already gone through the whole process. So there is no friction now. You can buy the next eight books of my series and it just zip, 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 just like Amazon. They buy the books. It just appears in their book funnel app and away they go. And through all of this, I've got two minutes left. So I guess this is my pitch. Um, book funnel delivers all of the eBooks and audiobooks for all of these stores that we just talked about and, and pretty much a whole lot of other people. Um, we handle all the ebooks. We handle all the support. Uh, if your readers have any trouble getting their books, you send them to us. We take care of everything. Our, our support people are there 365 days a year, even on Christmas, um, helping readers get their books. <clears throat> we deliver the audiobooks through our app. We have a cloud player that plays in, in any browser you can possibly throw at it. We have a lot of people that listen at work. Uh, not probably when they're supposed to be working, but whatever. I don't care. I'm not here to judge. Um, and then you can down, we, we offer downloadable MP3s. If you choose to turn that option on, now I will say it depends on your genre. If you write romance, eh, your readers probably don't care about MP3s. But if you're writing in something like sci-fi or fantasy, that's actually a selling feature. Dakota Kraut now puts up on all of his sale pages, get DRM-free MP3s when you buy direct from Mountain Dale Press because Audible has no way to turn that off. You know how when you go through KDP, you can say, I don't want DRM on my books, that's okay. You can't turn it off on Audible. There's no way to get books out of Audible that are not loaded with digital rights management. That's what DRM means in case you didn't know. Um, but when you sell direct, no. You buy from me, you can listen in the book funnel app, or hey, you can download these MP3s and keep them forever. And I will tell you, in the lit RPG crowd, which tends to be kind of techie, yeah, they love that. That's a feature for them. That becomes a selling feature. Um, you can bundle physical and digital products together. I talked about that. BookFunnel doesn't care. We'll just ignore the physical products that have nothing to do with us. But if you bundle them up together, you can actually sell a paperback, ebook, audiobook together. BookFunnel will deliver the ebook and the audiobook, and the paperback will go wherever you decide to send it. Um, you can bundle ebooks and audiobooks together. Uh, BookFunnel's actually built a system where you can bundle multiple objects into a single, what we call a delivery action. So when they buy one SKU on your store, we deliver the ebook and the audiobook at the same time. You don't have to set up, you don't have to make them buy two products in your store in order to deliver two products. And what's even better with that is you can actually bundle up, I got 10 seconds, you can bundle up, I see you. Um, 
You can actually bundle book box sets together. So if you upload all eight of your books to BookFunnel, you can then create a delivery action that just delivers all eight books. You don't have to go create a separate vellum file and put eight books in a box set. You can just deliver all eight with a single sale. I have one more thing. BookFunnel doesn't get cut at your sales and we're done. Thank you for it. No time for questions. <laughs> <laughs>